I've come to the conclusion about the so-called church, which should be making more of an impact in our world and society than it does. The conclusion that I came to is that there is a gap in Christianity. There's a gap, and I, I titled the message today, Closing the Gap. See, that gap is between knowing about Christ and being conformed to his image. See, there's a lot of people know about Christ, but their life doesn't really show it. See, there's been a gap in Christianity and church for centuries. It even exists today. There's a lot of professing Christians that can talk the talk, but they are not walking the walk. They can speak Christianese. They can say all the religious uh, jargon, and they can do all of that, but they can't display Christ in their life. See, so there's a gap there. And the gap is that it, it deceives people in thinking, well, I know about Christ. That's only part of it. Jesus told the religious leaders, the Pharisees, you think you got eternal life because you know the Scriptures? No. It takes more than just knowing the Scriptures. It takes more than just knowing about Christ, but it's being conformed to His image. But how much of the the life of Christ is manifested in us is what matters. You see, there is a gap between learning. See, uh, our minds, we want to learn about Christ. Yes, I want to know more about Christ. I want to have more revelation of the Word. But more than that, I need to have that Word conform me to the image of the one who saved me. You see, so I believe it's possible to close the gap, both in a church and in a Christian's life. See, we can close that gap. We can take the things that we know about Christ and be conformed to his image. So I want to begin with Jesus' invitation to his followers to come and learn of him. In Matthew 11, verse 25, it says, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus told them, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now I want you to realize something at this particular time. What was there to learn about Jesus? The only thing they could learn and understand and confess is that he was the promised Messiah that was to come. The Christ. The, the Savior of the Jews. That's the only thing at that particular time they could understand or learn of him. They had to confess that he is the Messiah that was to come. That was it. Why? Because he didn't die on the cross yet. See, he wasn't crucified. He didn't die for the sins of the world yet. He wasn't buried and resurrected yet. See, so there was only so much that when he said, come learn to me, that's at that time, that was all you could do. So... And the Holy Spirit wasn't poured out on people. So how much could they really understand of who Jesus was? So it wasn't until Jesus died on the cross, he was buried and resurrected, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out on them that they could actually know who he is. 
So it wasn't until all this took place that God's plan for salvation for man was completed. So that we could not only learn about him, but we could also conform to his image. See, that couldn't happen before. When he said, come learn of me, that couldn't have happened because he didn't go to the cross. Salvation wasn't completed yet. So they couldn't have that. But uh, I want to read from the Amplified Version, Romans 8, 29, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. It says, For those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning, foreordaining them to be molded into the image of his Son and share inwardly his likeness that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. See, this is the gap. This is the gap in Christianity, is knowing about Christ and then being molded into his image. See, this is the purpose of the cross. The purpose of the cross wasn't just for you to have your sins forgiven, but that we might be molded into the image of the Son of the living God. But we first got to know him. You got to know him. That's why we got to preach the gospel. We got to let people know who he is. We got to preach that. But you got to know it, know him before you can be conformed to his image. To know him, let's go to Jesus' baptism. In Luke chapter 3, verse 21, it says, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open. The Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. So here, the Father God is presenting his son to the world. Heaven opened up. Voice came down. Said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. So that tells us that God is showing us what pleases him. You know what pleases him? Jesus. If we're going to please him, somehow we got to look like his son. Because that is the standard. Jesus is the standard of pleasing God. God the Father said, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So that tells us that if we're going to please God, that we are going to have to be conformed to Christ's image. See, nothing else will please him. See, this is what separates religion from true Christianity. See, you can do all the religious works. That don't please God. Because you still look like a sinner. You can still be a sinner and do all the religious work. That never pleases God. You can, you can do all of that stuff. Go feed the poor. Go give all your money away. That don't please God. What pleases God is when we look like his son. That he sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. For your sins and my sins. So there's a big gap there. There's a big gap in religion and true Christianity. True Christianity is when we look like Jesus. So Jesus is the standard. So Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the standard. He's the model. He's the image that pleases God. That model never changed. It never will. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. There's no plan B with God. There's no another, there's not another way to do it. I don't know about you, but I've been reading the paper. I read the paper. I like to read the bad news before I read the good news in the morning. <laughs> I don't want to read the good news and read the bad news. I read the bad news and I read the good news. But it looks like recently... 
they are arresting more religious leaders for molesting young boys. Hundreds have been accused of cert certain crimes against molesting young, young kids. I don't know. It's amazing. Hundreds of them. In a religious system that dominated this city and this area for, 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 for two centuries. I don't understand it. People are still flocking in in them places. What we're striving for is not the image of some religious leaders. What we're striving for is the image of Christ. That's what we're striving for. Now, the Apostle Paul says this. You might want to quote this. Say, Pastor, don't you know what Paul said? Paul said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Paul was saying, follow my example only as I'm following the example of Christ. In other words, don't do everything I do. Only do the things that resemble Jesus. Now, the New King James Version in 1 Corinthians 11, 1 Paul says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. See, God didn't set, his, set up his ministers as the examples or the standard. Sometimes people do. Sometimes people want to raise up these powerful speakers. And, and, and Paul even said that to the Corinthian church. There's having divisions on the speakers. Some said, I like Apollos. Or some say, oh, I like Paul. Or some say, I like Carl. God didn't set the ministers up as the examples. They are not the image. And how many times have churches gone through the moral failures of their leaders? I don't know about you, I was in a denomination. And I was pioneering my first church. In the assemblies of God. And we had two of the greatest preachers I've ever known fall into immorality in Louisiana. When I'm trying to pioneer a church. I didn't even want to tell people I belong to that group. And they turned many away from serving God. Many people fell away because the, the ministers fell into immorality. That tells me that they didn't know who the image that they were trying to, to portray was. It's not that minister. It's no minister. The ministers is not the image we're trying to imitate. Of course, I see a lot of people trying to imitate other ministers. They want to preach like them. Look, I don't want to preach like anybody. God called me to preach. I preach the way he tells me to preach, and that's the way it is. I don't want to have to imitate anybody. I'm, I want to follow Jesus. Now, there are several things that we've got to come to grips with to conform to Christ's image. Which is the main purpose? The purpose of us serving God is that we might look like his son Jesus. He is the example that he gave us. That's it. We don't have to conform to any church structure because there's a million of them. The main purpose of the work of the cross is for us to conform to the image of Christ. But the first thing we've got to come to grips with is that heaven is open for us. Heaven is open. Heaven was open at Jesus' baptism when the Holy Spirit descended on him as a dove. Heaven was open on the church on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down on 120 in the upper room and filled them with the Holy Spirit. And everybody was speaking in tongues. God's Holy Spirit has been poured out. Heaven is open for the believer. Still open. I haven't got a word that it closed. It's still open. God's still pouring out His Spirit. God's still blessing people. People's still getting saved. People's still getting healed. People's still getting delivered. 
People still getting blessed. Heaven is open. When the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church. God has a plan for each and every one of us. We have a personal God. When he saved you, it was you and him. When he saved me, it was me and him. It wasn't me and a bunch of people. No, it was me and him. God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. I would have never thought in a million years that I'd be overseeing churches and preaching different churches. I would have never thought that. But God had a plan for me, just like he's got a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. Now, we can look at that and say, yeah, God wants to prosper me materially, financially, in my business. No, no, no. When God's going to prosper you, He's going to make you look like his son, Jesus. That's where prosperity comes. Because all the money you're going to leave here. All the things you're going to leave here. The only thing God's concerned with is how much of the image of his son, the family resemblance, are we going to have. That's all he's care about. We know what the ultimate plan of God is, and that is for us to conform to the image of His Son. His plan provides for everything. That's what you got to understand. That makes it possible. That's why I believe it's possible to close the gap. I don't have to just know about Christ. I got to start looking like Him. The second thing that we got to come to grips with is that we are not like him. you, you got to come to grips with that. He's perfect in every way. We're not. This is what the Lord says about us in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, our nature is not like his. There will always be a difference between us and him. Now, this is a revelation the Holy Spirit constantly brings to you, brings to me. I'm not like him. No matter what I try to do, Jesus is other than what we are. See, we are one thing, Christ is another. Because Romans 3.23 tells us we all have sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We all missed the mark. We've all sinned. See, we in ourselves are incapable, we're incapable of producing anything that pleases God. Jesus told the parable of the vine and the branches in the Gospel of John in John 15, 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You can't do it on your own. See, bearing fruit in there, bearing fruit in there can be misunderstood as us doing some good works. No, bearing fruit is nothing more than me conforming to the image of Christ. That's how I bear fruit. We can't do it apart from Him. The next revelation is that we got to endure is this. God presented His standard, His mold. We must conform to it and we must conclude that it is utterly impossible for us to do it in the natural. See, our natural mind, at best, at best, doesn't come close to his. Our will, at its best, doesn't come close to his will. See, we can try to work it up. It's never. Our most devout feelings and desires are defiled. They are. Let me give you an example with Jesus and his disciples at the Last Supper. In John 13, 4, 
He says, and he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Besides the fact that everything that Jesus did at the Last Supper, he broke the bread, he made a new covenant with them. He told them all of that. Then he got down, he began to wash their feet. He did all this for them. And then after the supper, when he got arrested, they deserted him. Jesus washed their feet to teach them about humility because that about emptying themselves out. Obviously, they didn't empty themselves out because they deserted him as soon as he got arrested. They were just thinking about themselves. See, to become conformed to the image of Christ, we have to empty ourselves out and serve others. As long as we're selfish, because that's not what he is. As long as we're selfish and only thinking about ourselves, you will never conform to his image, because that's not what he is. See, he gave up everything. Because he is the standard. See, he's the, we're, we are supposed to be following and imitating someone who went to the cross of Calvary. He gave it all up. And until we're willing to give it all up, you won't conform. You will be who you are. And who we are doesn't please God. It's who he is. That pleases God. The Apostle Paul told the Philippian church this. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. He says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. This is who we are trying to imitate. This is who we should try to imitate. He is the example. You see, our best is not good enough. Isaiah 64, 6 says, all of us has become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. You might be thinking to yourself right now, this pastor is trying to discourage me. By no means. I want you to come to a conclusion. See, we will never conform to the image of the Son of God. We have a dilemma. Here's the answer to the dilemma. The Holy Spirit will show us. See, we don't know how to do it. We don't know how to be it. We don't know anything unless God shows it to us. See, the Holy Spirit is the power of God unto salvation. But the Holy Spirit is also the power of God to conform us to the image of Jesus Christ. That's the whole purpose of of us being part of a church, the whole purpose of us worshiping God, the whole purpose of us serving God is that we might look like Jesus. That the world out there, remember it was the world that labeled the early church Christians. They, they didn't come up with that name. They called them Christians at the city of Antioch because these people were acting and talking and just like Jesus. He said, these, these people are Christians. They're doing what Jesus did. Well, that's how people ought to know who we are. We need to look like Jesus. We need to talk like Jesus. We need to act like Jesus. See, the best that we can do is not good enough. 
It's not. There is no other way. It cannot be done by human hands. I wish I could. I wish I could lay my hands on you and boom, you look like Jesus. That ain't the way it happens. It's not going to happen by human knowledge. You're not going to get to the point and say, well, I know everything there is about God. No, you don't. There's no religious structure that can do it. There's nothing, no form of religion that you can put yourself in that's going to do it. This is what the Apostle Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. See, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us how this is done. Listen, I used to try to run the church. I used to try to run the church by structures that was given me. I don't know whether some of you remember years ago when we were pastoring here in Chalmette. When I got out of that religious organization that I was in because it had me in a structure. I don't know whether y'all remember this, but I got in a baptismal tank. I got in a baptismal tank. People thought I was in sin. I said, no, I'm not in sin. I'm here repenting of religiosity. I'm not going to be religious anymore. I want to be like Jesus. And I don't want to be the pastor of this church. I want the Holy Ghost to be the pastor of this church. And y'all know what happened since then. The church grew to almost 600 people. Why? Because we are going to eliminate everything that is of the human mind and of the human will. And we're going to just submit ourselves to God's Holy Spirit. How is that? You want to conform to, to the image of Jesus Christ? Then give it up. Give it up. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us how it's done. God sent His Son to become man so He could save man. He was subjected to every temptation that you and I could ever have, but without sin. He showed us how it's done. He experienced all the fires of life. He experienced the rejection, the heartache, the pain, the suffering. Then he endured the cross and he made the ultimate sacrifice. He gave it all up. By doing that, he satisfied the Father. I want you to understand this. Everything Jesus did on the cross of Calvary satisfied his Father. And everything he purchased for you and I satisfies the Father. See, he endured the cross, the ultimate sacrifice. By doing that, he satisfied the Father in every way. That's why there's nothing else God can do for mankind other than what you see on the cross of Calvary. Now, do you think for one second that God would discount Everything that happened on a cross of Calvary for some works of the flesh or some, uh, 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 some human effort? Or do you think he will accept some kind of philosophy or religious teaching that will substitute what happened on a cross of Calvary? You think he's going to do that? Do you think he's going to Settle for your own way? I don't think so. You think he would sacrifice or substitute the sacrifice on the cross for some humanistic teaching like the world says? Well, you just do the best you can. Best you can, my foot. The best you can is not enough. The best I can is not enough. That won't pass the test. People say, well, I, I say, man, how are you doing with God? Oh, I'm trying. Try you try all you want. You're never going to make it. It won't be acceptable. Your best is not good enough. There's only one whom the Father said these words to, you are my son, whom I love and well pleased. That's his son, Jesus Christ. And the only thing that's going to please Him is what we look like. 
We look like his son, that's going to please him. We talk like his son, that's going to please him. We act like his son, that's going to please him. If we submit ourselves 100% to the will of God, then that pleases him. Nothing else does. It won't be because of what we have done. It will be because of what we have emptied ourselves out and allowed the Holy Spirit to come in and do the work and conform us to the image of Christ. Your works is not going to make you look like Jesus. When you look like Jesus, you will do the works of Jesus. But you don't do the works to look like him. You look like him, and then you do the works. You get saved, then you do the works. You can't do the works to get saved. You can't do the works to look like Jesus. You got to look like Jesus first. Then you can go out and do the works. So when God looks at us, he's got to see the family resemblance. <laughs> that's the only thing that's going to please him. Only when he sees his son's image in us is what's going to please him. The question is that we got to be asking ourselves. What is the Lord doing with me? Or better yet, what am I allowing God to do in me? What, what have I surrendered to God? See, now his answer to you would be, I'm trying to prepare you to have the fullness of my son to be in you. See, that's God's purpose for you. It's God's purpose for me. You see, that's God's plan, and like I said, he has no plan B. There's not another way. There's so many Christians, they try to develop their own thing. No, there's only one thing. Let's imitate Jesus. That's only one thing. See, he did this with his disciples after his death, resurrection, and the day of Pentecost. That's what I'm saying. It's only after all that took place that the disciples could even do what he asked them to do. He had to die. He had to be resurrected. He had to send the Holy Spirit on his people to be like him. See, things began to change then. He had promised them the day, the day after Pentecost that things were going to be different. Christ was now living in them. See, they knew about him. They saw him die, they saw him resurrected, but until the Holy Spirit came, got in them, then they start acting like Jesus, because the Spirit of God is in them. So the Spirit is what we need. See, the Spirit, the, when, when the church was baptized in the Holy Spirit, it began to transcend them above the natural earthly nature. See, we've got to get above the natural. True Christianity is living in the supernatural. Why? How do you know that? Well, I can do things I never did before. I can turn down sin. I can turn away from sin. I don't have to follow the world. I can, I can stand up against the world. I can do things I couldn't do before because now I'm supernatural. See, we got to get above the natural. The natural is saying, well, I'm going to work a little harder. I'm gonna no, 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 no. I'm just going to surrender. I'm going to let the power of God's Holy Spirit permeate himself in me where I can do more than I could ever dream or imagine. That's what you got to do. You got to realize you can't do it. We got to realize that we need him. See, because the old nature dies hard. It, it dies hard. It yields to God with great difficulty. How many know that? Have you struggled with yourself? <laughs> huh? Have you struggled with yourself? It don't want to die. To submit this nature that is not like his to God is great difficulty. That's what Paul said in Galatians 2.20. Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's not about what we can do, but it's what God can do 
living in us. That's what Paul said. I'm dead. I'm crucified. But I'm not living anymore. It's Christ living in me. That's when you conform to the image of Christ. When Christ is doing the work in you. See, we must die. We must be crucified. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. When we die to ourselves, think about that. Paul said when he was crucified with Christ, nevertheless he lived with Christ and living in him. See, when we die to ourselves, Christ resurrects something else in us. The stuff that dies, he resurrects and makes it more like him. See, we got to die to those things. We got to give those things up. What looks like him is the only thing that's going to please God. And Christ lives in us, as Paul said, and through us by faith. But we are conformed to Christ's image only by the power of God's Holy Spirit. So to close the gap between knowing Christ and being conformed to his image is to surrender to the power of God in our life. I want you to start getting into something surrendering. See, now is the time to surrender. See, there's things in our life that we need to surrender. See, if we're willing to empty ourselves, we're willing to empty ourselves, God is willing to resurrect the stuff that doesn't look like His Son. He can resurrect it so we can conform. There might be somebody here today. You have never resurrected. You have never been resurrected. Your life has never been resurrected. You don't know what it is to be born again. You don't know what it is to be changed. You don't know what it is to have your sins forgiven. You don't know what it is. Because you never really surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you experience religion. Religion ain't going to change you. Your own philosophy is not going to change you. Your parents' philosophy is not going to change you. It's only Jesus. There might be somebody here today. You've never done that. Today is your day. Stand with me.